Hi everyone, this is Adam Twardok from FontLab. Let's talk about FontLab 7. Okay, so now let's quickly switch to, to, to spacing. So, okay, so I, I have, I can see that I have 108 here, but this auto spacing made 60, uh, 73 here. But actually, probably, I may want to have the side bearings, uh, you know, the same on both sides and also here. So let's, so for spacing, I'm going to use the metrics mode. So I'll click on the edit metrics. If you press Alt F1, there's some um, keyboard shortcuts that you can use with uh, for dragging. Um, you can drag spacing controls, which are the side bearings, but you can also use arrows with keyboard modifiers. And if you like the keyboard using the uh, square brackets, left, right, lets you walk through the text, basically. Just text, text, next in text, previous in text. The text is basically, you know, this is like a little text editor. So this is your text, whatever you type in here. Um, but of course, each of these glyphs is an editable object. I actually want this to be 95, the left side bearing, that is. And now I would want this to be the same. So how can I do it? Well, I can just enter the vertical bar which means the opposite side bearing. I could also use vertical bar and then a name of a glyph, which would be the opposite side bearing of a different glyph. And now watch, if I you know, change the spacing here, this spacing also adjusts. Well, that's very nice, so this is symmetrical. Now what I can also do is in this glyph, I would want to have the left side bearing, I'll type H, and that binds it, makes an expression. So now when I, so this is a linked metric, so I can't change it, but I can change the parent metric, so to speak, the left side bearing of H, and then the right side bearing of H changes because I've entered bar, and the left side bearing of E also changes. For the right side of the E, you should probably space it manually because it doesn't really uh, you know, it's a E is an asymmetric character. But then, if I uh, let's say I'm gonna uh, copy these and I'll create the F, I could do it differently as well, and then paste. You know, this is, and I'll just delete this. So this is my F. I didn't use any element references or anything. I just copied it. You could, of course, use element references. I'm going to turn off the quick measurement now um, so it doesn't flicker on the screen. Again, if I want to get to the spacing uh, interface, I can press M. That gives me the spacing control. And here I can say E and also E, right? So now this F becomes linked. The right side bearing of F becomes linked to the right side bearing of E. You can build these relationships and you can also use, you know, a name of glyph plus something or star and, and uh, for multiplication, asterisk for multiplication and many other, you know, if I draw this and I press, I'm in a metrics mode, if I press the bar, then it centers uh, the glyph. If I'm in the editing field and I type these expressions like, you know, 25 here. When I enter bar here, that means it's the opposite side bearing, say bar uh, F or something. And then if I enter bar F, then it means in the right side bearing field, use the left side bearing of F. And if I entered just F here, then the right side bearing of this would use the right side bearing of F. The quick auto spacing is a good start. So that's the um, the, the semicolon. I'm gonna drag this. By the way, when you draw, when you're in the active, uh, sorry, in the contour tool, you can make the side bearings draggable. But sometimes you don't want that, so then you you do view lock, and then I say glyph metrics, and then they're not draggable. But if I hold M, then I can drag them and release M, and I'm back in the. Contour editor. So that's again 
a quick way, you know, you don't want to accidentally, it depends on what stage of your work you're in. So sometimes you want them immediately draggable. And if not, it's like almost like a modifier, you know, M drag release. And I've, I've changed it, but I won't uh, drag it by, by mistake. Okay. So this is, you know, this is just a, well, super simple kind of geometric font, which is um, what many people start with. Now let's, let's also do an O. So I'm going to take, I'm going to just, you know, make myself two H's here. Let's do something. Okay. I will, I will, I will just, I will make a, a small modification in family, then family dimensions, font dimensions, curve tension. I, I'll explain it a bit later, but I'll just enter 70 here and I'll use the, uh, the ellipse tool. If I, drag i can draw from the corner and if i hold command and control i inverse the direction which means that uh, it will be kind of cutting out so let me just show you we would use um well we we could use from the center so again how is it from the center is out so i'm gonna go here hold out and drag and now you can see that this is not really a circle because I've I've used the oval with curve tension, I can click here on this first button. That will always give me like a ellipse, or if I hold shift, a circle. Sometimes people, of course, want circles, but this tension parameter allows you to kind of use a global tension for like arcs. So I've entered 70, but I'm going to enter maybe 65 and uh, activate the oval tool, go to the oval with tension, and once again, alt, and just, you know, draw this, tap A, so I'm back in control tool, command, click, yeah, maybe I get these, I can scale immediately using these little helpers, if they're not visible, this is selection frame, so, I can turn selection frame on, but I can also press command T or control T to get a bit more controls, including rotation. But with the selection frame, I can just, you know, slightly scale it. So I get some overshoot. You know, when you get the snapping behavior and you don't really want to snap this, I actually want uh, to be more precise. I can click control. And then I'm a bit more precise and uh, the snapping is, is disabled. And the control or command will reverse. So when I could hold command or control and draw the other, the inner. If I draw two contours in the same direction, so to speak, then they fill each other. So you can either use the fill tool and then alt click that will reverse the contour direction or you can uh, right click on any node and say reverse contour so one contour goes in one direction and you can see these little arrows so now they go in opposite direction direction of the contour means how they cut out each other and if i reverse it they go in the same direction. That means that they add to each other. If I drag from the ruler a guideline, let's say normal guidelines, if I drag them, they just per glyph. If I shift drag a guideline, then it will be for the entire font for all the glyphs, which mostly makes sense for horizontal gui guidelines. But now when I double click this guide, it becomes a measuring guide. So I can automatically see, you know, when I'm editing a contour, I can see the thickness, you know, update instantly. So I can easily uh, get, for instance, the same, you know, numerical output that I wanted. So let's say, you know, I really want uh, 
I really want this. Select this, make sure that they're equal. So I press shift again. This is align shift. Um, so I press the horizontal bar to align 128, 125. Okay, I don't, you know, this is now equal. Very good. Maybe a quick auto space. Now, let's say, you know, I have some side bearings. I'm going to turn off the guides, uh, show glyph guides. I kind of like the spacing at some point, but then I, I realize, yeah, actually, I want to make this wider, this whole O. So how do I do it? Well, first, you know, if I just shift and drag, well, this is not really very good, right? I don't, I want to drag these nodes out. But I also would want these to keep, you know, their position, their relative position, which may be, you know, sort of more or less in the, mi in the middle, but not necessarily in the middle. But we also see another problem. You know, if I drag this, then, of course, I'm destroying my side bearing. The side, basically, the basic spacing, if you just use numbers, you send setting a side bearing, but the other side bearing really sets the width. So the width is fixed. But there is a way to go around this, and that's binding the side bearings. If I bind the left side bearing and bind the right side bearing, now these numbers take precedence. And when I modify the glyph, these side bearings will always stay the same. So when I select this and drag and release, FontLab automatically updates the side bearing, sorry, the, the width actually, so that the side bearing is the same as it was before. So these are, this is side bearing binding. A right click on any panel. You can use window panels or right click on the toolbar or any panel to open any other panel. I'm going to open the preview panel, which is here. I'm going to dock it at the bottom, resize it, and click on this button, and also make it centered. So here I control this little. Uh, side panel and this echo text means if I type something here, I can keep it. That's my custom text. But if I click this button, echo text means whatever text happen, uh, appears here on the top in the window also is shown in the preview panel. With Power Nudge, I have power nudge on and I have my bound side, side bearing. So I have, there is an equal sign before the number. That's the indicator for bound side bearing. Now I select this and I drag release. And wow, this is, you know, I'm just dragging this. FontLab knows that these nodes should stay in place and these automatically interpolate their position. So basically, adapt their, their position. So this is awesome. I really like it. So, you know, this way you can control the width. I could express this curve portion using different kind of configurations of handles, like this one, this is short, this is long. These are more or less equal. There is a way to make them all kind of proportional for any segment, and that's contour balance. That will make the handles keep the segment as much as possible, but make the angle between the nodes and the angle between the handles parallel. So I can drag the curve as well. And this is sometimes very useful for adjustments. You can then also hold space and keep dragging. And this is actually works in a preview, so you can, you can see what's going on very easily. Or you can do, that's what I often do is text, repeat glyph. So it just gives me a copy of the same glyph. So it's black, it's previewed, you know. Uh, so when I edit this, I can kind of look to the side and see how the glyph renders uh, in when in field. But I always wondered, you know, why doesn't actually, why are these handles... There are these little lines, but there is no little line in between. Well, in FontLab, we have a line in between. That's called the Tooney line, named after Eduardo Tooney, who kind of, but he, he's been the inspiration. So when I turn on the Tooney lines, 
I can actually, you know, drag this line and have the segment change accordingly. But more importantly, I can also select, let's say, select this contour with command click near it or double click on a contour. And then I can do contour edit tuny lines and then all the tuny lines become visible and I can use keyboard up and down, but also with alt, I can rotate and basically change, you know, the tension in all the directions. So for instance, you know, I can now do this, edit tuny lines and maybe increase the inner tension a bit. So the outer counter is a bit rounder and the inner counter is a bit more square. Very easy to do. It's a good idea at some point to go to names and give it type of day. And then make sure that at least weight, width, and slope are kind of roughly given. Click on build names. The other names are built. Click OK. Uh, so this is just one font. I, I just have a couple of glyphs. But let's say I want to make a variable font. How do I do it? Well, that is actually very easy. So we're going to do is window, workspaces, variations. That will open several panels, which are kind of relevant for variations. There's elements, there's layers and masters. And what I'll do now, I'll also open the preview panel. Workspaces, you can set them up yourself. So different panel configurations, you can save them. They travel in the font file if you want. So, you know, you can, you can kind of, depending on the process in which you are in a given font, you can have different panels open. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll do font, add variation, and I say condensed will be the other master. This is the regular master condensed and add access. Click OK. Now I have two layers, right? Regular and condensed. And I also have two font masters in font info. Font masters are kind of like headers of the font. So they store information about kerning for each master. Kerning, some names, uh, some zones, guides, etc while a glyph can have many, many layers, like an illustrator. And if a name of a layer is the same as the name of a font master, then it becomes interpolable. But you can also have layers with different names for other purposes. Okay, so now I, these are identical in all the, the glyphs. The regular and the condensed is identical. Uh, since I still have power nudge on and I have my bound side bearing, I can select and now make it more condensed. This updates, right? And now I've changed this glyph a bit. I can also go here and maybe uh, move this element a little bit closer and kind of move this one here. Okay, so I've changed these two. And now I actually get variation because I have two different layers. They have the same set of contours. They are matching, which means that uh, the same number of con uh, contours and each contour has the same number of nodes on both layers. Now, if I, if I want to modify one of them, let's say the regular, and I add a node here, then this doesn't have that node, so it becomes unmatching. I can either fix this by saying glyph match masters. There are several ways to add a new node, but one, a simple one is to hold J, which is the knife, and click. Now they become non-matching. But if I turn on edit, match when editing, that means when I perform a, an operation like adding a node in one master, FontLab also adds it in a corresponding position in the other master, which is 
you know, mostly what you want, but sometimes not, not always, because sometimes you, you, you want to kind of draw independent shapes on different masters and then kind of make them work together later. This is going to be a bit of a silly example, but since we only, only have a few glyphs, what I can also do is I can use components. This glyph, kind of the leading glyph, I'm going to use my F as the leading glyph in the design and the E, uh, let me just delete this, delete this and delete this. Okay, now it's updated because it has this bound, the, the side bearing is being taken from the H, the left side bearing. Now I'm going to do glyph at component and I'm going to enter F and that means this is not an element reference, but this is like a, a reference to the entire F glyph. So whatever I change in the F also updates here. So I have a component and I also have a piece, uh, an extra contour element. Since I'm, I'm using maybe F as my leading example, I would change this linking. I would enter F here and I would enter F here. And now this E is reusing the same sub bearings as the F and it's using at least a part of the F design. I haven't really shown anything about curves. So let me give you a quick over, overview of, of curves. If I alt click a flat segment that converts it to a flat curve segment, what it means you know, if I didn't have this, if I move the node, I can see this is a straight line. But if I alt click, I get some handles. Now, when I move the node, um, that becomes a curve. If I have a corner around a, a curve segment, I can alt double click that corner. And FontLab automatically finds a sensible handle configuration. So it's kind of quickly, instead of you, you know, just having to do it manually, it's just faster. So yeah, I'm going to turn off uh, suggest stems here because I don't need it right now. I'm not drawing, but I have snapping. So yeah, so this is, this is, you know, a, a curve. Maybe I'm, I'm going to click here and I'm going to press I'm going to do edit duplicate, which gives me two nodes on top of each other. And I'm going to select this node. So I, this way, maybe, you know, I'm going to add um, a node here and alt click this. So I get, you know, I could get uh, like a, of a spur or something. If I double click on a corner, you know, a sharp connection, that's a sharp connection. Double click, that becomes a smooth connection. A smooth connection between a line and a curve is called a tangent. So here I can, you know, the, the, the tangent because the angle is always fixed. If, if I change, ah, I need to disable power nudge now because power nudge is, yeah, is, is smart, but sometimes it's sort of doing weird things if you, if you, if you, see that some handles and nodes are moving along, then probably power nudge is on. Okay, let me go to the O to show some more things. I drag both handles. Um, the, 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 the connection is smooth, meaning that the handles uh, move, keep their angle. Alt, I can uh, kind of mirror the movement of the of the two opposite angles uh, handles. Sorry, when I double click a node, a smooth node that becomes a sharp node now or a corner. Now these move independently. Uh, but if I hold Alt, I get it temporarily to align, but there's still uh, a sharp connection. When I double click again, it be becomes smooth. Double click again, becomes sharp. When I alt hold Alt Shift, I can drag a smooth node or any node along the curve, which is very nice and useful sometimes. 
if I put the the nodes at the places of the contrast, and then sort of the editing of the curve is is a bit more uh, is a bit more rational. When I'm happy with a particular outcome, I would do contour, maybe nodes at, at extremes, or maybe simplify and clean up. These are operations that you can you can play with to kind of rationalize your uh, your contour. Curvature is a visualization of how smooth a particular node is. So uh, this is this can be shown very simply. You know, if I uh, maybe on the outside curve it will be even better. So you can see that basically here it's sort of smooth as it says, but actually there is a little lump. That's because the curvature of the curve on one side is different from the other, and it's different a lot. So in order to make sort of something a bit better smooth, I can um, either say harmonize node, and that puts the node into a position between the two handles where the curvature is equal on both sides. So this curvature comb is the same on both sides. And that means that this is kind of mathematically the most, the smooth, uh, smoothest transition. Uh, I can, so add the note here. This is, when I add, this is always at the smooth position. When I change the handles, of course, sometimes it makes sense, but sometimes you know it 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 doesn't doesn't really the you know you you can see the bigger the difference, the more you will see this unsmoothness. So I can either harmonize it or um, what is it out double yeah out double click. I you know change the configuration again, and I can. Okay, it's also another out double click it fixes it a bit, or I can shift out double click or turn the, that smooth node into a genius node. When I turn it into a genius node, uh, then whenever I edit the handles, Font Lab automatically finds like the smooth smoothest possible position for that node. I can still move that node, but you can see that, um, you know, when I change the handles, uh, the curvature on both sides, even here, it grows, but then falls, and it's the same um, on both sides. So this, this, this visual indication of the curvature and um, genius nodes, they're also, Kind of useful for curves are smooth. Of course, if you want them to be smooth, because there are many situations where you know it does make sense to kind of out drag a smooth node between two handles. It only moves that node and keeps the handles in place. Command slash or control slash and Windows. That's the view, alternate view. Basically, there are two view sets. So you can turn you know, different um, parts of the user interface in the Glyph window on and off in kind of two stages. So one can be like a very simplified view. I could even turn off the handles so they only appear when I when I move near them and that's like a very you know and even turn off show spacing controls so i really get a very kind of minimalistic view here and i press command slash or control slash and i can turn off turn on more stuff more details here so you know um the quick measurement or uh, the guides, this curvature, and then very quickly alternate between those two view views. Thank you so much for watching.
and see you soon in the next video.